uh, Chris, did you ever play past the junior varsity level of basketball? Uh, well, I got asked to leave the varsity team. So, yes, What's I did it? play varsity basketball, but I got asked to leave. Uh, we and why did you get asked to leave? Creative differences with the coach. And, and what kind of creative differences? He thought that I was probably a little bit better at football. And they were like, we don't want to risk you getting hurt and taking your time. So we need to get you out to run track and play football. So they said, hmm. probably the best thing for you. DC ain't even make JVT. I love it. I, I, I 100% did. And uh, I was asked to leave. And, you know, there's a lot of people out there that know why. And that can stay. It's not something we need to dig up. It was fighting was involved, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, correct? You, you beat somebody. Basically, you bullied somebody. I, you know, I was a lover, not a fighter. And I have the, the daughter to prove it, you know? <laughs> um, so... Welcome to Big B Daily. No frauds allowed. What is going on, everybody? What's going on? This is Big B Daily. Welcome back. We appreciate everybody being in here. This is your man, Big B, Brian Hanley. Man, there is a lot going on in the sports world right now. My favorite time of the year. Whoo! Happy Friday. We got a lot to cover today. So we're talking a little bit of Otani. Didn't get into the way I wanted to yesterday because I got some real thoughts on it. Um, but we'll get into a little bit of that today. Marvin Harrison Jr. skips his pro day. Is it that big of a deal? Should it be that big of a deal? And then... March Madness. I mean, the upsets already, already are absolutely incredible. I cannot wait, cannot wait to get into that. So before we do, as always, again, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m., Big B Daily. We are here live on TikTok, live on YouTube. We appreciate everybody being in here. If you're on TikTok, please keep tapping the screen. We need at least... 5,000 likes and 30 new follows. So if you are in here and you're not following, please give us a follow. We appreciate that TikTok. Also, come on over and subscribe to YouTube. Just click on the link in the bio and come over and subscribe to YouTube. Get a lot of stuff over there. You know, a lot of podcasts, interviews, um, just a bunch of, of, of access to things that you will not get. You get Hot Soup Fantasy Football LTB Sports, two separate networks that you don't even have to subscribe to. You you get that on top of everything else that you get. So remember, click on the link, subscribe to Big B Sports Talk over on YouTube. Come and subscribe, people. And also, look, I know that you guys have choices for who you guys listen to in the morning. I appreciate everybody being here. And if you like and you enjoy what we are putting out to you. Anything that you guys do, you know, to help support the show, we appreciate it. Any super chats that are available that you feel like you want to to send, we would appreciate that on YouTube. Any tips on TikTok, there's a tip jar within the bio. Just click on the link in my bio. There's a tip jar and any gifts. We appreciate all of that. So thank you guys for supporting the show. Thank you guys for being here. Now, let's get into it. First off, okay, let's talk about Otani, this money saga. You know, it, it breaks yesterday, and here's my thing of how I feel about Otani. First off, let me just throw this out there. I think he did it. That's number one, okay? I think he 100% was involved. And you can fight me on it. You can tell me that I'm wrong. You don't know what you're talking about. Look, my brother, God rest his soul, I love my brother to death. My brother didn't have access to my bank account. Now, I don't have millions of dollars like Otani, but, I mean, he didn't have access to my bank account. I mean, Tell me how an interpreter is going to have access to this guy's account. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. 
Not to mention, when the story first came out, it was Otani who paid the guy's debts for him. That's what the story was. That was the initial reaction. And we all know about reactions. The initial reaction is usually the, the, the correct reaction or the, the truth. And that was the reaction. Boom. I paid his debt for him. Okay, good friend. If they would have just left it at that, there would have been, I don't think there would have been that big of a problem. They would say, hey man, why are you paying this guy's gambling debt? Why are you, you know, sending it directly from your account? Why wouldn't you transfer it to his account to pay? But okay. But then they come back and they say, well, hold on a second. Hold on. Actually, this guy stole money from me. They stole the money. He stole it to pay off his debt. Huh? And the, the part that I don't like is they're trying to say because the guy doesn't speak great English that his interpreter was able to take advantage of him. I don't buy that for even a half of a second. I, I, I mean, because first off, I mean, the bank is the bank. He doesn't have to have his money in a place. Or let me just say this. Maybe he shouldn't have his money in a place if he doesn't understand the language. For instance, if I lived in Japan and they were somebody, I was getting paid from an employer in Japan, I could still keep my money in Bank of America or an American bank where I, if I needed to call them, I could speak to them. I could do that. You're going to tell me Otani had all this money in an account with somebody where he doesn't speak the language? I don't believe it. I don't believe it. People on TikTok are saying he should be banned. Yeah, if they find out, absolutely. The Dodgers have to be hating this because all the money that they were going to make on merchandising, ticket sales, all this money, it's all come to a halt. Hell, I got word today that they've suspended all Otani merchandises through Major League Baseball. Well, huh, that's interesting. Why would they do that? Why would Major League Baseball do that if they didn't think he was guilty? Or if they don't know that he's guilty? That, I mean, that's, that's all I'm saying, people. I think he 100% did it and he got caught. The guy gambles. Now, I'm not saying he's a bad person, but the rules are the rules. And I know there's a lot of you out there that's saying, you know, it's not that big a deal. He gambled on some games. It wasn't baseball. The problem is if you allow somebody to do that, first off, where's the stretch? You gamble on football, basketball, soccer. How far are you away from gambling from baseball? I'm just saying, how far are you away from gambling from baseball? And who's to say you're not, I'm not even, you don't even have to be a degenerate gambler. I'm just saying, you bet on football, you bet on basketball, you bet on soccer. Well, when those things aren't going on, what else is going on? Baseball. You don't bet on baseball? Where's the stretch? You have to keep some part of the integrity of this, people. I'm not saying it's that big of a deal to bet. But you know what? There's certain things that you have to sacrifice if you're going to make millions of dollars and play in a league. For instance, for me and you, if our job said, hey, you can either work here and make this money or you can, ba you can gamble and you can't work here. Either you would find another place of employment that will allow you to gamble or you just wouldn't gamble. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. So it, I, I don't have any sympathy for these guys that are getting caught gambling. I have no sympathy for you because you know the rules and nobody's forcing you to play baseball. Like he's not being forced to play baseball. He doesn't have to play and he could gamble all he wants. But if the rules for Major League Baseball say you can't gamble, to be in our league, then period, point blank. You can't gamble to be in our league. That's the end of it. 
And I think people looking at it the other way, you're wrong. And I have no problems telling you that you're wrong. You're just wrong. It's their league. They make the rules. You don't have to like the rules, but you also don't have to be involved. You don't have to play like football. They say you can't gamble on anything, anywhere, anytime. Uh Uh-oh, I think that's terrible. Great. Don't play in our league. Don't, Don't participate. I mean, nobody's forcing you. Then that's my whole thing. Nobody is forcing anybody. And then we're talking about, I know people are comparing it to Pete Rose. Look, Pete Rose was gambling on baseball. He admitted it. And Pete Rose was gambling on his team. He he admitted that. I mean, so, and if you're going to try to tell me that Pete Rose didn't do that while he was playing, you are lying to yourself. He absolutely did. He absolutely did. And no, Pete Rose, Pete Rose was a degenerate gambler. That's how he was different. And he admitted so. <laughs> and so that was the difference. Pete Rose is calling in bets from the clubhouse phone. Lord have mercy. That's a degenerate gambler. And he admitted he was. It's not the same, no. It's not the same. So I I, I just, I think it's bad. It's, it, this is going to end up being bad. We have not heard the last of this. So, and my man Bill Kernan, he thinks the interpreter being his best friend that he's fallen on the sword. I think so too. I think so too. Drayton Nay says Pete Rose didn't do it as a player. You're lying. Stop it. <laughs> Just stop. Just stop. <laughs> Don't tell Pete Rose was has gambled on everything. But while he was playing, no, I'm not going to bet on baseball. Once I'm done and I'm the manager where I really control the game, that's when I'm going to start betting on baseball. Please shut up. Come on, man. Are we that naive? Are we really that naive? Jimmy Christmas. Jimmy Christmas. There's zero evidence. Other than him admitting it, you're right. Zero evidence. But you guess what? Pete Rose is banned from baseball. My man, Drayton. Pete Rose is banned from baseball. He didn't get banned for doing nothing. So, zero evidence. Get out of here. Lord have mercy. There's always one, isn't there? There's always somebody that will, no matter what you do or say, they are going to take the other side no matter what. Not no matter what. Common sense somehow never, never comes into that their mind. It's just, nope. No, they didn't do it. He never gambled as a player. Never. I know he gambled on everything else his entire life, where his entire adult life, on everything, but for somehow we're going to say, no, he he didn't bet on baseball while he was playing. He just waited until he could really control the game. Shut up. (laughs) Gee, many Christmas. Just stop. Glove didn't fit. (laughs) I love it. Yeah, this Otani thing, man, we're just seeing the beginning of this. It's just the beginning. So... It, it it's just it it's it's just the beginning. It, this is a bad look. I mean, baseball already struggled for fans. It already struggled. Now you're gonna have the biggest star be part of a gambling scheme. This will crush baseball. I mean, this will literally crush baseball. Yes, West Virginia fan, you are exactly right. A nightmare for baseball. And, I mean. Oh, my God. And you already know. They already have it. Major League Baseball has gone to this interpreter and said, look, you have to fall on the sword here. Now, we're going to set aside $50 million for you. But you have to fall on this sword. If that requires you going to a federal prison for 18 months, then you're going to have to do it. But we will give you $50 million if you do this for us. So... And that's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. They are literally, I mean, the cover-up started, what was it, 30 minutes after Otani's first statement? Where he said he paid off the debt? All of a sudden, you gather with a bunch of lawyers and Major League Baseball, oh no, the interpreter stole it. And then the interpreter's going around singing like a songbird that just, yeah, I did it. 
He had nothing to do with it. I did it all on my own. But you know what? The one thing that he's never said, the interpreter didn't come out and say, yeah, I stole his money. He didn't come out and say that, did he? You haven't heard him say, yeah, I stole his money. I took the money without his knowledge. You haven't heard him say that. You said that he's paid off the debts. He's not responsible. But you haven't heard him say, hey, I stole the money from him to pay off my bookie. Because, again, sports gambling in California is illegal. Sports betting, you, you, it's illegal. So they were going through a bookie. Whew. And they better be careful because when there's the bookie, that means there's the mob. And you want to go snitching on the mob, good luck with that. <laughs> good luck with that. <laughs> That's all. I mean, I don't know anything about the mob from what I've heard. That's all I've heard. And, and, and what I heard, I mean, movies, well, they don't make movies about stuff that's not real, that can't actually happen or hasn't happened before. So be careful, be careful. So Atani had nothing to do with the interpreter gambling. Really, Austin, you know that? Did he tell you that? So that's all I'm saying. I mean, how do you know that it was the interpreter that was even gambling? I don't believe it for a second that it was. I think it was Otani that was gambling. So that's all I'm saying. And that's what I believe. And you're not going to change my mind. Period. End of story. Because you don't come out with two totally separate stories on what happened within 30 minutes of each other if you're telling the truth. I mean, I'm not going to say to the media, yeah, I paid off his debt. And then 30 minutes later, come back and say, no, I didn't. He stole it from me. Tell me why that happened. So that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. And then we got somebody in here telling me I'm a bad sports broadcaster, yet they're on their phone watching me. So I must be doing something right. Because you're in here watching me. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. And the angels may know too. The angels may have known too. I don't know. I think it's crazy. I think it's crazy. So, ooh, that's why he got married. So she gets his money. <sighs> I don't know. I, I'm, you're not going to convince me that Otani wasn't involved. There, there's zero reason for him to, to come out with those two different stories. There's zero reason. <laughs> My man Ben Tatum said over on YouTube says that Pete Rose is watching the story close. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. And you know Pete Rose is going to have something to say. They, have, they can't find Pete Rose because, first of all, he's somewhere, you know, gambling somewhere. But they're going to find Pete Rose and put a microphone in his face and he's going to say he needs to be banned for life. You know it's coming, people. Y'all know it's coming. You know it's coming. So, but you're right. Otani's involved, but they're going. Major League Baseball is going to do everything in their power to cover this thing up. I mean, they already did. They already did. So, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. But they are going to do everything they can to stop it. But... We're just, it's just the tip of the iceberg, people. Just the tip of the iceberg. All right. That was a good segment, wasn't it? Woo, Otani. But let's move on, man. Let's move on. Let's talk about Marvin Harrison Jr. So Marvin Harrison Jr. had a pro day. And he did nothing. (laughs) Ohio State had their pro day yesterday. And Marvin Harrison Jr. did nothing. He didn't work out. He didn't run a 40. He didn't run any routes. He did nothing. He did a couple of interviews. And his interviews basically said, hey, man, y'all saw the film. What am I going to do here that's going to improve anything for me? And the only thing it can do, I could get hurt. Or you guys could just start picking me apart. You saw the film. Either you like it or you don't like it. 
and he had his Hall of Fame daddy standing right next to him saying, that's exactly what I told him to do. There's no reason for him to go and do all these workouts. He understands. And he he brought, I love what Marvin Harrison Sr. had to say. He was like, hey, during this time, as a professional athlete, your body's resting, healing, trying to get stronger. You're not working out. You're, you know, trying to p- perform. He goes, so why not do what you need to do to get your body ready for the season? I love that approach. And he's right. And if you don't like Marvin Harrison Jr., then don't draft him. If you, oh, he's arrogant. Who does he think he is? Then don't draft him. But you know what? Isn't he doing the exact same thing that Caleb Williams is doing? Only Caleb Williams had a pro day. And he threw. The difference is Caleb Williams just, they asked him a question. He said, no, my film is there. And, you know, that that should speak for however, what you want to look at. I'm not going to throw at the combine. Which, how many people don't throw at the combine and it's never been a big deal? All of a sudden this year, it's a big deal. I don't, I don't understand that. It's like the media created Caleb Williams to be this big star. And now the media is almost dead set and trying to tear him down and putting out these narratives about, or like the question he got at, oh, you're afraid to compete with these guys. You're afraid to compete. I don't think anybody that plays football is afraid to compete when literally on a football field, your job is to move another man against their will. I don't know that you can be afraid to compete and do that. So it's just weird. But having said that, I agree with what Marvin Harrison Jr. is doing. I agree. Just do, I mean, do you. If you don't want to work out, don't work out. If you want to put all your energy into getting ready for the season, that's what you should do. And some people might say, well, this is a job interview. Okay. This is, this is what I'm doing for my job interview. Either you like me or you don't like me. And if, and if it's, if you don't like me, okay. So that's all I'm saying. If you don't like me, don't draft me. Don't hire me. But you see what I do. You see what my, my tape is in my chosen profession. Take it or leave it. I love it. I love it. I don't think there's anything wrong with what he's doing. So, exactly. Marvin showed more in college than anybody this year. You know, I love it. I just I just think that is the way. If, if you're that good and you're that confident, tell everybody, hey, you've seen me play. Either you like it or you don't. Now, can guys that are going to go in the fourth or fifth round do that? No. They don't have that opportunity. They've got to go showcase themselves. Marvin Harrison Jr., he already showcased himself, in my opinion, and I think in a lot of people's opinion. So, yes, make the recruiters slash scouts do their research. Earn their buck. That's my whole thing. Why do you have a scouting department? What are you going to learn about a guy in running a route against nobody versus running routes in a game. What do you think is more important? Come on now. I love the approach. I do. I love it. I love it. So, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. We will definitely see what happens. I know they're talking about trading. Arizona is talking about now trading the fourth pick. Arizona's got like 11 picks in the draft. And they're talking about possibly trading back, somebody moving up to get Harrison. I think that would be a mistake. I think Arizona needs them. I think that would be an absolute mistake for them to trade. And uh, now if somebody takes them before them, then yeah, you can back up. But if he's there at four, you have to stay there and take them. Just my opinion. Just my opinion. You know, Arizona's not great. They haven't been great. They got, they need another weapon. If you're going to stick with Kyler Murray and they're going to stick with Kyler Murray, then you got to give them something. We'll give them this, you know, and see what happens. See what happens. And my man, Mike, the ruler. So big B are pro days and combine overrated. 
it just it depends. And I know that's a, a wishy-washy answer, but it, it literally depends. If you are a fringe guy, maybe on the fringe of even being drafted or trying to move up to a third, trying to move up to a fifth, something like that, yeah, they're important. Because they're going to put you through certain drills. Yeah, they're important. Now, is are they more important than actual game tape? No. No. Never. Is it better than film? Absolutely not. However, it, I mean, they can, they, they do mean something. It's not that they don't mean anything. But it's just not as important as other things. And game tape rules the day. Film rules the day. But I do like what Marvin Harrison Jr. is saying. Hey, go watch the film. You know how good I am. There's no reason for me to do these workouts. What's the point? I agree. Good for him. And hopefully it works. Everything works out and he becomes a top five pick, which I think he should. And I still think the Bears need to take him number one. I I, I don't care what your your plan is. I don't care that you can't take wide receivers number one. For the team that you got, you should have taken them number one. But they can't do that because they got rid of Justin Fields, so now they have to take Caleb Williams, or at least a quarterback. So I get it. I get it. So let's see. Every year somebody rises, so it helps them in particular. Yeah, exactly, Maurice. Every year – you see somebody rise because of a workout. But let me ask you this. How often than not does that person that rises because of a pro day, do they end up not working out? I think it happens way more on the negative side than the positive side. I mean, hell, look at Zach Wilson. He was being talked about, but lo and behold, all of a sudden, Zach Wilson becomes the greatest thing since Joe Montana. The Jets take him too. He can't play quarterback in the National Football League. But yet, he had this meteoric rise because he made some crazy throw at a pro day. And boom, look what happened. So, and that's the whole thing. It doesn't help out as much as what people think. In some cases, yes. But no, not, not, not most of the time. Not most of the time. I hear Atlanta wants to trade up to number four. They do. They do. But we'll see. We're going to move on, though. We're going to move on. Hey, again, as a reminder, before we hit this next segment, Big B Daily, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. Central Time. Everybody, remember to chime in. If you're on YouTube, please subscribe if you haven't already. And anything, again, if you guys still are loving supporting the show, man, or love the show, love what we're doing, Please consider supporting the show in any way that you can. Same thing on TikTok. We appreciate it. Thank you, guys. And by the way, on TikTok, keep keep hitting the screen. We need to get to 5,000 likes and at least 30 new follows. So if you are in here, please give us a follow. Give us a follow. And click on the link and go subscribe. Go subscribe over to YouTube, to Big B Sports Talk. Now let's get into the nitty gritty, people. Let's get into the nitty gritty. So, oh, my man, Paul, he says he likes the studio. Could use some blue. Well, we're going to talk about blue. My man, Paul, he is our resident Kentucky fan, people. And let's get into this. Let's get into this. So March Madness started off yesterday. Let's start here. ESPN had 28, 28 million brackets filled out. Let's take that in. 28 million brackets ESPN had filled out for the men's tournament. 1,800, just over 1,800 are still perfect. Unbelievable. 28 million I think it was 1,856 are still perfect. That is incredible. That's why we love March Madness, people. That is why we love March Madness. So that's it right there in a nutshell. So let's start it off. 
I won't even crush my Kentucky fans as of yet. BYU, disappointing. Gets beat by Duquesne. What the hell? What the hell is going on? Duquesne smacks you around. And the game got close, but let's just be honest. Duquesne basically owned the day yesterday. They owned that game. They controlled the entire basketball game. And then smacked you around at the end. Disappointing for the Big 12. That was an ugly loss. Ugly, 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 ugly. But the surprise, NC State beating Texas Tech, to me, that was the bigger surprise. Because I didn't think NC State would have anything left. They won five games in five days. I'm thinking, yeah, they're going to be cooked. They weren't cooked. They whipped Texas Tech. They didn't just beat Texas Tech. They whipped them. Lord have mercy. You talk about an embarrassment. Gee, many Texas Tech should be ashamed of themselves. That was disgraceful. And NC State's not even any good. But, oh well. And Texas Tech played well all year. And they got whipped. They got whipped. People are saying it's going to be the path that they took in 1983. That NC State. I see you over here. Yellow fella on TikTok said they're going to do the same thing in 83 and go all the way to the title. They could happen. I mean, the only thing that NC State needs to do to get into the Sweet 16 is beat Oakland. You know, something that Kentucky couldn't do. Beat Oakland. <laughs> Woo! Uh, I mean, look, my Kentucky fans have to be, I mean, look, y'all need to shut down all bridges in the Lexington, Kentucky area. You need to go find your best Kentucky fan, your best Kentucky fan friend. Give them a hug. This has got to be brutal. This is brutal. I mean, Oakland had never even won a game before in the tournament. But they beat Kentucky. A guy came off the bench. Off the bench. Scores 32 points. Makes 10 threes. A guy that isn't even good enough to be a manager at Kentucky. Let's just put that into perspective. If this kid went to Kentucky, they wouldn't even let him practice as a student manager. He's not good enough to do that. Yet, 32. Lit you up. Lit Kentucky's ass up. I love it. Yes. One in four in the last five years. No, it's not the last five years because they say the last five years of the tournament can't be five. It's the last four. It's ugly. It's ugly. Whew. People talking about firing John Calipari. They want to get rid of him, saying the game has passed him by. Hey, man, could Calipari ever coach X's and O's? I mean, was he ever a good X and O guy? Or did he just have more talent? He always had more talent. That's the difference. And now that guys are figuring it out, and he said it, hey, the game's changed on us. Teams are getting older. Uh, Yeah. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't the game get older? If I'm a fringe guy of going professional or going to the NBA or not, why wouldn't I stick around in college another year now? Why wouldn't I do that? You know, if I'm a a late first round, early second round pick, why would I risk going to, to the pros for that when I can stay, develop my game more, and make money doing it? Because you can make money now in college. NIL has changed that. Hell, the NBA recognized it. They shut down NBA Ignite. Remember they opened it up, what was it, four years ago? For guys to go and, hey, you can make some money, you can train with professionals, you can learn how to be a pro. NBA shut that down and said, yeah, we don't need it anymore. We, we literally don't need that anymore because guys can make money in college now. So we don't need this at all. <laughs> but Kentucky getting beat, man. Whoo! Somebody said Kentucky, <laughs> Kentucky fried chicken. <laughs> Unbelievable. I did, yeah, that's 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 bad. This is a bad look for for John Calipari. 
and Kentucky. This is a bad look. At some point, you have to win in the tournament. At some point, you know. And then Calipari said something stupid last night. Said, well, look, I don't want this one game to define their season. What? What do you mean? <laughs> what, 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 are we, what are we supposed to do? I, I know this will define their season, but it shouldn't. What are you talking about? So let me get this straight. You didn't win the SEC. You didn't win the SEC tournament. You got beat by Oakland in the first round of the NCAA tournament. What are we supposed to do? What what, what should define your season then? A bunch of success? I mean, what, what should define your season? Or should the narrative be Kentucky again underachieves in the tournament? That is what it is. So, that's what it is. And no, he said it shouldn't define their season, but it would. And my question is, how the hell shouldn't it define their season? Of course it should. Of course it should define their season. That's what they are. Choke artist. I mean, am I wrong? Tell you, prove me wrong. I'll listen. If anybody can prove that Kentucky didn't choke, I will listen. And here is a great point by my man, K-Ned. Some coaches aren't as strong in new world of everyone else can now play players too. Exactly. Because before, we knew, first of all, we already knew that te- that schools were paying players. Under the table, it was happening. It happened. But now that everybody can do it and it's out in the open, you just don't have that advantage anymore. And when you don't have that advantage, how good are you actually at coaching? And we're starting to see it. We're starting to see it. So that was a massive choke. Oh, but it's fixed. Gotcha. Gotcha. But if it was fixed, how is it a choke? I don't understand that. If, if you choked, that you're not fixing the game. And if it's fixed, then it's not choking. So decide which one you want it to be, and then let's do that. But you can't say, oh, man, it, it was a choke job, but it's rigged. What? <laughs> Goon squad, come on, man. Come on. I'm trying to have personal growth. You guys are making it hard. You guys are making it hard on me. Lord have mercy. You're telling me that it's rigged, but then it's a choke. It can't be both. It's got to be one or the other. Wildcats got rings. They will bounce back. What rings did they get? I'm curious. What, like, what ring did they get? So, I'm just curious. And look, I mean, my man, Paul... I know you're a happy guy, but that smile on your face with that shirt on stings. Did Was there a reason that you didn't think that I was going to wear my Louisville shirt today? Of course I'm wearing my Louisville shirt today. And look, I get it. My Louisville basketball program is hot dog water. It is that nasty water that comes out of a garbage truck as it's driving away from your house. That's how good my Louisville basketball program is. Just awful. But here's the one thing to keep in mind. Louisville won just as many tournament games as Kentucky did this year. Zero. Zero. And I feel great about it. And Kentucky losing makes me feel great about it. And there is nothing that anybody can say that is going to rain on that parade. Nothing. So, mm mm mm. What, what, hold on. Somebody says, my man Darren Howard, he's mad. He hates March Madness. The problem is, is because his bracket looks like Swiss cheese. Somebody just took bullet, just shot that thing. It's horrible. And while I'm talking, I had the Big B bracket challenge that people got into. A lot of y'all got into it. I appreciate it. And unfortunately, Big B is dead last. How the hell does that work? How the hell am I last 
in my own bracket challenge. What the hell is going on? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And see, my wife, here she is, April H. She's getting into the comments. Oakland shirt added to the comments. Which every time somebody upsets Kentucky, she buys a shirt. She's got a St. Peter's sweatshirt. And now she's getting a good old Oakland shirt. You know what? I'm for it, though. I'm for it. If my dollars got to go to something to support a team that beats Kentucky, that upsets Kentucky, that embarrasses Kentucky, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. I'm all for it. So, hey, Big B, you're broadcasting out of Louisville. I live in Louisville myself. No, I'm not in Louisville, my man Larry. I'm I'm from Louisville. Grew up in Jeffersonville. But, no, I'm in Dallas. I am in Dallas. I do remember Kevin Ware injury. That was disgusting. Felt horrible for him. Felt horrible for him. So, who is Scotty D coming on here lying about Patrick Mahomes? Lord have mercy. People will say anything, man. People will say anything. Now, this is going too far, my man, Al Woody. We love Al. He says, has Kentucky lost its blue blood status? No. No. That is, no. Kentucky, look. Kentucky is like the Dallas Cowboys. Kentucky is like the Dallas Cowboys. Always promise this is their year, then can't get it done. But Kentucky is a team that everybody loves to hate, just like the Dallas Cowboys. Now, I did get into a little bit. Somebody said that, you know, Kentucky was the standard. And I'm like, Kentucky is not the standard. They are the most popular team. I I could go that far and say they are one of the most popular team, if not the most popular team in college basketball. But they're not the standard. No. So, absolutely not the standard. But to say that they're the the, the standard, no. But, yeah, they're not going to lose their blue blood status. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So, hold on. My main king of sevens. He wanted Nevada to win because of Trey Coleman from Jeffersonville. Absolutely. You know how mad I was at that game? Dayton coming back. Well, they were down, what, 17 with like five and a half minutes to go and went on a crazy run to win the game. I was so upset, not to mention my money line. I had I had the perfect parlay yesterday. Feeling good about it. I had Oregon money line. I had Nevada money line. And I had Texas money line. I'm feeling good. And all of a sudden, Nevada, I'm like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Unbelievable. Just, oh. I I just, I was so upset. It it just made me mad. Just made me mad. I'm like, I got this thing in the bag. I'm going to the bar. Things are going to feel good. And then this. But that's March Madness. That is March Madness. So, it is what it is. It is what it is. So, who looked good yesterday? Was there anybody that just looked like a really good, phenomenal team yesterday? Tennessee looked pretty good. UConn, they played today. Arizona looked all right in the second half. They looked really good. Iowa State got it together. And I think a lot of people think, hey, if you're not blowing out a double-digit seed, in the first half, you're not playing good. That's not true. That's not true. Creighton looked good. Yes, they did. North Carolina looked good. Yes, they did. I just don't think you can you can go by, hey, if you're not winning by 25 points at halftime, you're struggling. That's not the case. I mean, those other guys on those other teams, I mean, they play college basketball too. And they get scholarships too. Sometimes it just takes a minute. Sometimes it just takes a minute. So, but that's college basketball. I'm looking forward. The one game yesterday, and before we move on to today, Samford and Kansas. Lord have mercy. Oh, First of all, Kansas is up 22 points in the second half. I mean, Jesus. 
I mean, I just – and then the game gets down to that call and that ref makes that call? Oh, my God. I mean, look, I know if it, people defend officials and officials get mad that people bash them because they have a tough job. They do. However, when you make calls like that because you're out of position, that's why people get so upset. The ref made that call because it looked like he fouled him because he was trailing the play by so much. Had he been down there, he would have seen that the kid literally didn't touch him. And, oh, I don't know. Like I said, we get on officials a lot in here, and I'm going to continue until they make changes to be better. And you cannot make a call like that because you're out of position. It's horrendous. And it looked bad because of the way that the guy fell. He literally never got touched. He never got touched. It just... And then, you know, you hear... Now, you can't review plays like that, unfortunately. Because you can't review foul calls. Because, first of all, if you could review foul calls, Lord, basketball games would be four hours long. So you can't do that. But my problem with all of it is just be in position. Just be in position. You know, because it's one thing to make a bad call. Okay. It's another thing to make a bad call because you're out of position. And then when you're out of position, you anticipate something that never happened. And because of the way the kid fell, we know why he fell. He was trying to dunk the ball with two hands. He had a firm grip on it. The kid comes from behind, knocks it out of his hands, and his momentum got stopped. I mean, clean play. Clean play. But instead, the ref makes a call. He anticipates a call that never happened. And oops, hey, I'm sorry, Samford. I know for some of you guys, this is the last game you're ever going to play. Too bad, so sad. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So, it's that kind of stuff right there that that drives me and a lot of people insane. So, I love the tournament, though. I can't wait for today. What good games are you guys looking forward to seeing today? What good games are you guys looking forward to today? And again, as a reminder, everybody, Monday through Friday, Big B Daily. We are live on TikTok and we are live on YouTube. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. UAB? Okay. FAU? Okay. Who else? Who else are we looking forward to today? Nebraska. I can dig it. New Mexico. I, I got New Mexico winning today. I got New Mexico winning today. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. What we need to do, let's let's do something fun before we shut down the show today, people. Let's do something fun. Let's come up with, um, what do y'all want to do? A three-game or a five, five, a three-team or a five-team parlay? If we're going to do it, we might as well do it, make it fun. Let's come up with a five-team parlay. Let's do a five-team parlay. And I'll write it down, and we'll check back on Monday and see how we did. Let's do, let's do five. So everybody's saying a three teamer. Why a three team? Why a three team? Let's do five. Let's do a five team. So who do we got? James Madison, New Mexico, and UAB. Yeah, that's iffy. That's iffy. Let's try to win one. Let's try to win one. Who do we got? Who do we got? Hmm. Let me just look. Let me look. Little money line parlays. New Mexico. I like that. Oh, my God. Stop calling, people. New Mexico, 
Let's see. Let's see. James Madison, New Mexico. I don't like the UAB that much. I don't like the UAB that much. Um. Boom, 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 boom. Utah State. What about Utah State over TCU? I like that one. I like that one. So, we got New Mexico. We got New Mexico, Utah State. What was the other one that I said? James Madison. So, Yukon, Auburn, New Mexico, Duke, and Houston. See, the problem, you can't, you're not going to make any money on taking Yukon and Houston and Duke. You got to, we got to venture out a little bit. But that's not a horrible one, though. That's not a horrible one. UConn, Auburn, New Mexico, Duke, and Houston. That's not horrible. That's not horrible. But if you're doing money line, you ain't going to make no money doing that. You have to do spreads on that one. So we'll see. We will see. But oh well, we're going to shut this one down for today, people. I appreciate everybody being here. I appreciate everybody being here. Again, Monday through Friday, Big B Daily, 9 a.m. Central Time, live on TikTok, live on YouTube. We appreciate it. Thank you, guys. And the parlay, we're just doing three teams. Get New Mexico, Utah State, James Madison. Take the money line, people. I like the money line on that. We're going to see what happens with it. March Madness is back. Full effect. We'll see what upsets we got going today. Love everybody. See you guys on Monday. And aloha.